Hello, I'm Glenna Coleman, Youth Services Librarian at the Weathersfield Proctor Library. And this is our library bear, Bear, who is here with me again to read the books for our story time. This session's theme is about wind. So I don't know about where you are, but last night at my house, it snowed quite a bit, eight inches. Um, but I'm hoping that the spring wind will come soon, and maybe if we read enough stories about wind, that will happen. Our first story is called Kite Day, a bear and mole story. And this book is written by Will Hillenbrand. Day, a bear and mole story. Does look as though it's going to be a windy day in this story. Let's see how that works out for us. We'll see Bear looking up. Yes, Bear, this is a story about a bear too. I'm sure you'll enjoy it. Bear looked at the sky. Could it be, he wondered? He tilted his head up. Whiff, whiff, whiff. That's Bear sniffing, sniffing the breeze. He smiled and then shouted, Kite Day! <laughs> I guess he's really excited about that. Bear rushed home. <gasps> oh, he had quite a ways to go. Come on, Bear waved to Mole. Kite Day is here. Oh, it looks like Mole's busy in his garden. I wonder if he'll want to fly a kite. I wonder if he's excited like Bear is. Bear collected. Mole studied. Bear snatched. Hmm. Bear measured and cut. Mole drew. They both constructed. Oh, look at that. What do you notice about the tail of the kite? Is that in the colors of the rainbow? I thought you saw that. Finally, they raced outside into the meadow. The kite flew. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Oh, that's a pretty good kite. Well, don't they both look happy? It soared. Up, up, up. Then dark, heavy clouds rolled in. Rumble. That doesn't sound like good news for the kite. The breeze grew into a gust, then snap, the kite string broke. Oh, he looks pretty dismayed. So does Mole. Away, 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 spun the kite. Oh. I'm going to ask you to stop for a minute and predict. What do you think they will do about their kite that flew away? All right, let's turn the page and find out. Oh, no, screamed Mole and Bear. Down, 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 plunged the kite. Save that kite, shouted Mole. The two ran. Hurry, 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 urged Bear. Oh, there it is, flying away. You can see it's headed down. I wonder where it's going to land. It would be best if it landed on the grass, wouldn't it? Mole stopped. He tilted his head up. Splat, splat, splat. Rain pelted the broken kite. Well, it didn't land on the ground. Look, cried Bear. Oh, sighed Mole. Chirp, 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 
squeaked the chicks. Oh, look at that. And this yellow color is the kite. Thank you, sang the mother bird. <laughs> well, I guess that kite is still in use even though it's broken. It's sheltering the birds from all of that rain. This book was Kite Day, a bear and mole story by Will Hillenbrand. I hope you enjoyed that. You know, you can't fly a kite without wind. So, are you ready for the next story, Bear? Okay. Our next story about wind is called Wind Flyers. This is by Angela Johnson, and it's illustrated by Lauren Long. You notice the sticker down here? This is a Red Clover book. That's an award that is given um, in the state of Vermont for picture books. And this book was donated to our library by Cliff, the Children's Literacy Foundation. Wind Flyers by Angela Johnson, illustrated by Lauren Long. Great, great uncle was a wind flyer, a smooth wind flyer, a Tuskegee wind flyer. Hmm, I wonder what a Tuskegee wind flyer is. His whole life, all he ever wanted to do was fly. With his arms flapping, he jumped off a chicken coop when he was five. Oh, I have to warn you, don't try this at home. Then jumped off a barn into soft hay when he was seven. Uncle says it's because he'd watched some birds fly that day. Oh, well, we have to be careful because birds can fly, but people can't. <laughs> Unless, of course, those people are in a, an airplane. When he was 11, he paid 75 cents to go up with a flying barnstormer. Hmm. A barnstormer is someone who flies airplanes close to the ground and does tricks. It's what heaven must be, Uncle says to me with clouds like soft blankets saying, come on in, get warm, stay a while, and be a wind flyer too. They flew over the fields, over the lakes, and Uncle just knew if he could get a good grip, those clouds would be his. He cried when they landed because then he knew what it was like to go into the wind, against the wind, beyond the wind. There was magic in the wind back then, he says. Oh, they even have a windmill. When he was older, Uncle became a Tuskegee Airman. With the 332nd, he studied hard and flew in a war. Air Force didn't want us at first. Only four squadrons like us, he says, touching his mahogany face. And when his plane left the red Alabama dirt and flew in the air, he hoped he would never come down. He had finally become a wind flyer, a smooth wind flyer, a Tuskegee wind flyer, 
flying high above it all, never to touch the earth again, forever a wind flyer. When I ask him if it was a big war, Uncle says, they, are, they all are, but that's over now. We were something. Some of us didn't come back, but we never lost a plane we protected. Then Uncle points at the picture of him and the wind flyers, those smooth wind flyers, those Tuskegee wind flyers, young and brave, brave and young all. Uncle crop dusted some right after the war. That's the only way he could still fly, the only way he could still catch the clouds and feel the wind. He says flying is different now, though. Oh, look up here and think about what you see that's different. Faster planes, more people than ever, but Uncle says the clouds still sound the same. He holds my hand, and we watch new wind flyers jet through the clouds. Sorry, I'm trying to get rid of the glare for you. Then, once in a while, he takes me up, and we become the smooth wind flyers. Tuskegee wind flyers flying into the wind, against the wind, and beyond the wind, the magical wind. Doesn't that look like fun? That's the end. This book was Wind Flyers, written by Angela Johnson and illustrated by Lauren long. So the first book, the wind was used to fly a kite. In the second book, the wind was used by airplanes. So our third book is Wind Says Goodnight. This book is by Katie Rydell and it's illustrated by David Jorgensen. Let's think about the cover for a minute. What does a frog have to do with the wind saying good night? You think about that while we read. Wind Says Good Night by Katie Rydell. Well, it's definitely nighttime. It was late at night. All little children were in their beds fast asleep, all except one. The night wind brushed against a window. Shh, whispered the wind, go to sleep. But the child could not fall asleep. Outside, on the branch of a tree, Mockingbird was singing. It might be hard to fall asleep with a bird singing outside your window. Mockingbird, said the night wind, will you stop singing so the child can go to sleep? But Mockingbird loved to sing. Music spilled from deep in his throat as he sang of green woods, bright flowers, and warm summer nights. No, said Mockingbird, I can't stop singing until Cricket stops playing. Hmm... From the tall grass by the back steps came the cheerful ring of Cricket's tune. Cricket, said the night wind, will you stop playing so Mockingbird will stop singing so the child can go to sleep? But Cricket didn't want to stop playing. His toes were tapping, his coattails flapping, 
as the melody flowed from his fiddle strings. No, said Cricket, I can't stop playing until Frog stops strumming. Oh. Is that the frog we saw on the front cover? I think maybe it is. Frog, said the night wind, will you stop strumming so Cricket will stop playing, so Mockingbird will stop singing, so the child can go to sleep? But Frog was deep in the swing, lost in the beat, with a night full of rhythm in his hands and feet. No, said Frog, I can't stop strumming until Moth stops dancing. Moth, said the night wind, Will you stop dancing so Frog will stop strumming, so Cricket will stop playing, so Mole, so Mockingbird, excuse me, so Mockingbird will stop singing so the child can go to sleep? But Moth loved to dip and twirl on widespread wings by moonlight. Impossible, said Moth. The night is too, too beautiful. I can't stop dancing until moon stops shining. Hmm. Moon, said the night wind, will you stop shining? So moth will stop dancing, so frog will stop strumming, so cricket will stop playing, so mockingbird will stop singing, so the child can go to sleep? But moon's glow was so strong, it turned the green meadow grass to silver. Hard to do, said moon, hard to do. I can't stop shining unless there's a change in the weather. Oh, I see a cloud. Far to the west hovered a small dark shadow. Cloud, called the night wind, will you cover the earth so moon will stop shining, so moth will stop dancing, so frog will stop strumming, so cricket will stop playing, so mockingbird will stop singing, so the child can go to sleep? Only if you will carry me, said Cloud. In a rush of cool air, the night wind scooped up cloud. Soon, a mist spread over the meadow. A gentle rain began to fall, tumbling down through the dark, splashing on the flat bay waters, skipping on the warm green earth. <laughs> There's Cricket holding a leaf above him so he doesn't get wet. Moon stopped shining. Moth stopped dancing. I'll give you a minute and see if you remember what was next. Frog stopped strumming. Do you remember what came before frog? Cricket stopped playing. Mockingbird stopped singing. At last the night was dark and quiet and still. The child snuggled under warm blankets, closed tired eyes, and fell asleep. Good night, said the wind. Oh, so in this story, the wind helped the child to go to sleep. This story was Wind Says Good Night by Katie Rydell. Illustrated by David Luginson. Well, thank you for reading with us today. I hope you enjoyed our theme of wind. Bear and I will be back for another reading session. And at that time, you will find a new theme for us. In the meantime, make sure you do some reading on your own. Bye.